Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. His is the hand that makes. His is the hand that hurts. His is the hand that heals. His is the house of pain. He who breaks the law shall be punished back to the house of pain. This is episode 166, recorded June 22nd, a 20, a 20, a 2. Gruesome Magazine. Hi, I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic, or not so classic, film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? Gooba gaba, gooba gaba, one of us, one of us. Oh, wait. That's the wrong chant from the wrong movie. I'm, mm, I'm good. Other we, can go, we can go with that. We can go with that. All mm-hmm. right. Also joining us this week is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. How you doing? Oh, thank you. I'm doing well. I got back from a 10-day short movie shoot down in South Carolina. I got to work with some really cool people. And a uh, good start to the summer. Good. Good. Hot. Yeah. I bet it was Hot. hot. Hot, the heat down there. Joining us tonight is Chad yeah, Hunt, comic book wild. artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic era, the 1980s, and of course, the 70s. How you doing, Chad, sir? I am very good. I'm awaiting my next uh, series of shots to be turned into a unicorn. There you go. Yeah, so. Very, very good. Why don't you stand up and let us look at that famous Monsters of Filmland shirt? Because oh. it's the creature, yeah, the creature. yeah, the creature. Oh, that is one of the best. That's cool. Very, Sweet. very nice. All right, got it, got it at the flea market last uh, week. No really? kidding, really. Nice. Probably, yeah, yeah. Wow. wow, rock and roll, dude. All right, uh, we are going to talk about the Island of Doctor Moreau from 1977. Uh, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, um, it's going to be fun. And all of that goodness, right, 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 right. Absolutely, right. All right. Sure. <laughs> Let's just jump into things. Let's take a look at the card. All right, I'm Dr. Moreau from 1977, directed by Don Taylor, written by Al Ramrus and John Herman Shainer. Of course, it's based on the 1896 novel by H.G. Wells. The cast includes Burt Lancaster, Michael York, Nigel Davenport, Barbara Carrera, and Richard Basehart. Uh, was released July 13th, 1977. God, is that 35 years? 45? 45 years ago. Um, budget is $6 million. Seems like, did you like I tried to make it 35 years ago? It didn't work, though. <laughs> the box office is uh, $8.7 million. And the synopsis is a shipwrecked survivor discovers a remote island owned by a crazed scientist who is, carried, who is carrying out sinister experiments on the island's inhabitants. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Let's find out when we first saw this movie and what our first impression was. Whose choice was this? <laughs> Chad. Chad. Chad, you're Chad up first. <laughs> um, I think I saw this in the theater when it came out. Did you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, and I remember. No, I, actually, it was uh, HBO. I saw this on HBO. I remember every, all the rest of the, my brothers and sisters were there watching it too. And um, the my first impression of it was, wow. Because I was always, I always loved the original uh, Island of Lost Souls. And I loved the story of, of the Dr. Moreau story and everything. And so I, I, I loved it as a kid. And, but watching it now, you can see some of the little dings and dents in it you know uh dings watching w- watching it now but 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 i still i still like it because uh it had some cool um creature effects it had some cool action scenes in it it had burt lancaster mm-hmm. in there um really good cast michael york um you know doing his best um his best marvin the martian interpretation these are animals, you know that kind of. Thing. 
Molly, 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 Molly. But um, uh, yeah, sorry. yeah, this one, I, yeah, I like <laughs> this. I like, yeah. My first impression as a kid watching is I loved it, and I still like it a lot now. Um, cause, just because of the, it brings back the memories of like sure. when I was a kid. So. Mm, right. Those memories. Memories. All right, Jeff Marser, you're up next. When did you first see this masterpiece, and what was your first impression? I, I did see it in the theater. Uh, I was a big H.G. Wells fan from the time I was in uh, junior high. For you younger folks, that would be like late middle school, I guess. Uh, but uh, so I went to the movie. I've, I have i don't know why, but I, you know, I just absolutely loved the books. And I was always irritated with movies because they were never the same. Um, so there was that. But other than that, I think I, I, think I thought it was... Uh, pretty cool but watching it now it's more of a I, I i from the point when michael york starts changing you know when the mm. dr moreau is is uh, changing him into a human animal uh, i think it really picks up there other before that i'm just kind of seems mm. like there's a lot of running through the jungle and not really i don't know but the the uh, the effects are really interesting um, especially considering who did them. So that, that's a definite ah, plus. Yeah, we'll a talk great about cast. that. Great yeah, cast. Totally, yeah. Great cast. All right, Bill Mulligan. When did you first see The Island of Dr. Murrow from 1977? I'm pretty sure, like Chad, I saw it on HBO. I had, I had picked up the comic book, the Marvel Comics adaptation. And so I was bitterly disappointed when I discovered that the, whatever, wherever it was I saw at HBO or Showtime, had apparently cut the ending only to discover that no that's that's the film they changed something at the last minute stupidly in my opinion and i'm not terribly fond of this movie because i i love island of lost souls it's it's literally one of my top 10 favorite movies that i would take with me to a desert island i i absolutely undeservedly love it it's definitely my favorite of the three moreau films it leaves the others in the dust and then the 1996 disaster is a train wreck but who doesn't love train wrecks i mean if they said there's going to be a train wreck tonight at you know six o'clock on chisholm and hanover street you know you'd be there with a camera i mean come on so that that's pretty watchable and this one just sort of falls third place um the the makeup effects are competent i mean they were done by great makeup people but i don't think they're shown to their best advantage the movie takes place mostly in daylight where everything just looks like guys dressed up in foam rubber costumes. So I think they really lost, you know, they missed a, a real bet here. Just watching how things are staged, like the saying of the law in this one versus the saying of the law in the 1933 version. No comparison in terms of dramatic effect and all. So, you know, give them credit for, for trying, but um, it's got a good cast. Yeah, it's got a great cast, maybe the best cast of, of all three of the films, but I don't know. It just it's it just it, it is exactly as I remembered. It's been a long time since I saw it. And I was wondering maybe this is one of those films that I'll I'll like better than I did at the time. No, I think it's still pretty much where I had it. It's not a terrible film by any means. But you know, it's it it's it's in the shadow of Island of Lost Souls, and that's a big shadow. Mm, you cast a long shadow, doesn't it? Oh yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I, I saw this back in the day, but I, I I can't recall if I saw it on like movie of the week or HBO. It was one or the other. It, it doesn't really matter. It, there's not a lot to cut from this movie. Um, I suppose, except for maybe one little horny love scene. But the uh, I wasn't a fan of it back then. I'm sorry, Chad. I just I was like, oh, this movie. It's long and dull and uh and um i'm afraid my opinion has not changed uh i have not like bill i have not seen it since then but i've always been curious like to go back and, and watch it because like you know it was i wanted to see what logan seven was up to did he make it off the island? you know yeah <laughs> whatever uh but, and of course i always like muggle york but and he's fine in this and Bert Lang, i mean the cast is fine but it's just yeah it doesn't hold the same gravitas as, as 
uh, and I've never seen the 96 film. I just, I've steered clear. Oh. One day, one day I'll it's, catch it. It's worth checking out. But uh, yeah, so this one's always been kind of like weak sauce. And mm -hmm. after watching it again, I appreciate it more, but I don't know if I've changed my opinion. I appreciate it for the effort and the location and, and the, the, the makeup effects are fun, but like I think Bill's right. I think the problem is is that it's all in the daylight, right? Yeah, and and that hurts. Um, I think they were proud of their makeup effects and wanted to show them off, mm -hmm. and it's like that's not all. As well, it artists, may look it, worse it, now than it did then. I mean, yeah, right. right. And, and, and you got to consider that you know the, the apes and Planet of the apes were always in the daylight, right? Except for like conquest. Sure. Um. Sure, but you know the thing is, these monsters don't look. These are supposed to be creatures that were essentially animals that were carved into the shape of a human. They should be horrifically scarred and asymmetric and and all messed up. They should, they really should be messed up. They they look kind of clean and shiny. Well, these, these were transformed by the magic potion. A little genetics. Yeah, yeah like DNA. Genetics. Yeah, which, which only makes, lasts a couple of days. Which makes a lot more sense. I mean, you know, in terms of. Uh, you know, a, a science fiction novel written in 1896 or whatever, you don't expect the science to be perfect. They didn't even know there was DNA back then. But the idea that you could just cut up an animal and turn it into a human is, is pretty ludicrous. So adding the genetic element definitely makes it more plausible. But I don't go to these movies for plausibility. I mean, come on. Yeah. They just well, need to be more monstrous. If you're, if you're, Talking about plausibility, I guess one of the things that rubbed me now, rubbed me the wrong way, was how uh, Dr. Moreau's brilliant idea to understand how the animals felt was, okay, I want to know how the animals that I'm trying to turn into humans feel, so I'll turn a human into an animal, and that will tell me, and I'm... I, I, I didn't quite follow that line. Nah, but yeah. Yeah, well, I mad science is what he expect, you know. <laughs> mad science. You're on mute, Chad. Chad, his, uh, his, sorry. His intentions for why he was doing what he was doing were very glossed over and, and yeah, almost yeah. vague. And and um, even though they had a couple of philosophical arguments about, you know, turning animals into men and why why would you do that and it was very what could have been a very interesting idea if it was written better yeah. um and something that would have had some great dialogue in it that would sort of add to the movie uh where it lacked in a few places um but i think that's as much as i like this film i think that's one of the things uh the downfall of it that it's you know why are you doing this and why why are you so and why do you want to know these things and why mm -hmm. you know um that's what i would have been interested in seeing more than just oh, i gave him a shot now he's a pig you know <laughs> kind of a thing uh you know yeah. and you know and and being a fan of the original you know which was a big deal at the time what was she called jeff the jaguar lady or the Panther, yeah, girl. Leopard, Panther lady, Panther lady, or yeah, leopard girl, or something Panther like lady, that. I think, yeah, that was a yeah. big, that was a big thing to hype that movie at at the time. Oh yeah, and, and, and you, this you know, one. Oh, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say, what's crazy is when you read the book, she's not in it. That was a total right. movie mm -hmm. invention, and right. yet every time they do this movie, they usually put her in there. Yeah, yeah. Because, although H. G. Well, Wells didn't think of her, he should have. It's a good element. Mm -hmm. You you make a good point too, Chad, about. And, and Bill mentioned it, I think, I'm pretty sure I know Chad loves the uh, Island of Lost Souls a whole lot more than this one. Yeah. Uh, but they also, because it was pre-code, um, they had stuff in there like they're, he literally is talking about mating, mm -hmm. you know, creatures, that, and a man with one of the creatures. Yeah. Where in this one, he never, they never really talk about that, uh, even mm -hmm. though it's, it's sort of hinted at, but it's like they just sort of ignore it. And we never get the background. We kind of think maybe Barbara Carrera was a creature, but because she doesn't seem to know anything, 
<laughs> well, I think we're made to think that she was because of the other the other film. Right. right. And, but and, but and, we don't see anything. They don't talk but, about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, she found her when she was 11 years old. And, and right, that was right. sort of the extent of it. But she had all these mysterious things like when um, her and ha uh, uh, what is his name? Haddock. Haddock. What is his name? Braddock. 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 We're like making out in a tree house and there's creepy little Dr. Moreau. Oh, yeah. at the bottom. It makes you feel disturbing. like there's something, something going on, but it's never followed through on that. Why that was so creepy of him to be standing there watching. Right. It, it would well, have, know, the, if, if she was a real, yeah. if she was an animal, you know, it would have made sense. But the, the old version was so, I mean, that was a pre code horror movie and it's so, it, so ahead of its time and so perverse you know, you think 1933, what could they do? Well, the whole premise of this movie is that Charles Lawton, who gives this incredible sadistic performance, is, is trying to get this guy to mate with his, you know, animal woman to see if she can produce fertile offspring. You're like, oh, my God, this is breaking laws from mm -hmm. all the states, even yeah. Arkansas. You know, it's just, man. But that, sorry, and sorry Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you live there. You know how it is. I have family there. No, I'm uh, just kidding. Go ahead. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I was meant. I meant Alabama. So. Ah, oh, there we go. There you go. All right. Let me insult um, all our viewers one at a time. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the poster uh, because that I think you, Pretty, you mentioned earlier that the poster gives away something that the movie doesn't gives, even do. Well, yeah. it gives away the ending that the movie should have but doesn't have. So I guess that makes it okay. Sort of. Sort of. Uh, it it's is, a cool poster. Yeah. yeah. And it's got the 70s faces at the bottom of the Right. Movie. We got that. We yeah. did that we a lot. The bad, got the bad font with the poor color choice. So. Eh, it works. It's eye catching. It's a, it's a, yeah, yeah, the green outline is kind of blurs. Yeah. yeah, it blurs the whole thing. No, it does. Uh, I, of course, the cast includes Burt Lancaster, right? Yeah. Um, who's, who's good? He acts his heart out. Uh, the, uh... Yeah, but he doesn't really bring the same sadistic nature to no. it. That no. you know, it, that it it's a little too reserved, a little too. Yeah. He's more of the yeah. aloof scientist type. Yeah, he's aloof. He's too aloof. Yeah. Right? He's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, both Lawton and even more so um, Marlon Brando. I mean, the scenery is pretty well chewed by the time they're done with it. They are they are swinging for the fences. And he's yeah, there. There's our three, our pyramid of morose. Um, boy, <laughs> it's you got to you can certainly say each actor brought his own individual stamp to this. Mm -hmm. um, different levels of craziness, but that was Richard Stanley on the on the. Or Richard Stanley was it? What's the story was, on that, Richard? We was, oh my! Oh, well, my God! Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a whole podcast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah. they made a doc. <laughs> you got to watch if anyone's interested. Watch the documentary, um, "The Lost Worlds of Richard Stanley." Yeah, something. Yeah. Lost. It's on. I think it's yeah. Lost Soul. Lost Still Soul. on Shutter. I think it's Lost Soul. I think it is on Shutter, and sure. it's about the, the disaster that that movie was, and it's amazing. Yeah, and it, more interesting than the movie. <laughs> It was. It kind of seemed like well, the, the the short version was between Marlon Brando, who thought the movie was kind of a joke, just kind of taking it over, and Val Kilmer being a total yeah. dick, and yeah. between the two of them, they just ran the movie. And uh, I'm not sure why Richard Stanley got booted, other than that that was more like the money guys came in and right. were afraid it was going to be over budget and just without really even talking to him, hold him out. They weren't, they didn't like his method. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So but, I mean, we had Burt Lancaster won an Oscar and he's got sure. three other nominations. So he's a pretty big get for it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this is an AIP movie. movie too, which is yeah. a little surprising to me with this cast. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be, but. Wasn't me, David, Thiel like David Thewlis in, in one of those? He was in, he the, was in the 96 one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This movie doesn't feel like a six million dollar movie to me. No, it's all in the makeup, isn't it? Or the location, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, well there's maybe. Michael Michael York. Um, it's too bad you don't have any uh, Austin Powers in here, but yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> but Logan's Run, yes. Yeah. 
I was I was a huge fan of Love and Run. Yeah, both both the movie and sure. unfortunately the TV, the TV show. show and the, and wow. the comic and the and comic the, book yeah. and the comic George Perez. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That is early Perez. I mean, he's fine in this movie. He does what he needs to do. I, I, I don't think the script really gives the actors a whole lot to do. To you know, mm. he was, he he was basically there, out. yeah, to be uh, the bookend to mm-hmm. Lancaster's Moreau and question all this morality and and, and right. questions and stuff like that. Is basically mm-hmm. what he, he ended up being in this movie. Dang that's it. true to the book. Um, yeah. 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 Very much so. Uh, and of course, you got Barbara Carrera. Rower. Woohoo. Rower, did you say? Rower. <laughs> she is pretty. She's pretty. She's mysterious. And she is 100% supposed to be turning into a cat by the end of the movie. But. Yeah. I guess focus group said we don't want that, even though you've been building up to it for the whole movie. So just fade out to black. So they did. At the time, audience were probably more averse to bestiality, uh, you know, and that kind of thing than they were back in the '30s. I don't know, or when the, the original. Well, before the movie. yeah, the pre-code stuff, they pretty much did what they want, and if somebody wanted to, somebody mm-hmm. in some particular locale wanted to block it they could but well back 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 in that era was when rock and roll and all that was getting i was under fire for devil messages and and was attacked on into the 80s and everything so i I feel like audience may may have been a little more turned off by the fact that she could have been a cat and this guy was having sex with her so Mm -hmm. that's what i've always thought you know but Mm -hmm. i think they just want a happy ending yeah, but they didn't maybe. shoot a happy ending, so they just had a no. fade to black ending. Which I know it was weird. It was weird, but it was it was supposed yeah. to be kind of like a happy ending where oh, I found a boat. I yeah. found a boat, but I'm blind. It looked like that's what <laughs> she looked like when she turned around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm yeah. pregnant. It looked like something was going on, but they weren't quite sure if they wanted people to think that or nothing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, she's known as a Bond girl, right? Never say never again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is a unique Bond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. She's um, she's fine in this. It's just it's it's a lot of build up and no payoff. Yeah, I mean they even go as far as showing her from behind and right going asking her, "There's a boat! There's a boat!" And she t- slowly turns around. You're expecting her to be a cat. Dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but she's get, not. We get, womp, 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 womp. Yeah, we get nothing. Anyway, Michael York goes. Oh, anyway, there's a boat. The yeah. end. The end. The end. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, she was also in one of the very last of the disaster movies of the 70s. Um, of course, it came out in 1980 when time ran out. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. Uh, what? The vol- it was uh, a volcano movie. The volcano yeah. movie in Hawaii, yeah. Oh, that wow. is that is such a cheesy bad movie. It's, oh, it's, terrible. it's terrible. Well, it's so much fun to watch, but it's just terrible. Yeah. Fake lava uh, never looks good. Fake lava never looks good. Richard Davenport. Yep. And there's Nigel. Nigel, not Richard. Done. Nigel Davenport. Nigel. Excuse Nigel me. Davenport. We did Phase Four, and I believe we did the Jack Palance Dracula, where he was Van Helsing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah, that's right. He was. And Chariots of Fire, right? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's good. This role. This role is a thankless role. This is the role that I think Val Kilmer beefed up in the 1996 version. To give it a little more something to do, mm. um, but yeah, his his role in the various films, this, this character is he works with Moreau, but he's still got a bit of a conscience, and he may turn and there's, help the guys in the end, sacrifice himself. There's a little bit more meat on the bones of this character than yeah. Uh, I mean, he at the end when he goes, "You let him go now, or I'll kill, I'll kill you, I'll kill you," and didn't quite work out for him but Again, it, he gets, he gets sucker whole, shot oh, yeah he's sucker shot and and but that was just a fantastic turn for that character mm-hmm. to you know because you weren't really sure when, if he was on one side or the other and right and, I yeah mean, you kind of want to know about. what's his backstory he's obviously yeah. seen some shit mm-hmm. uh how, how did he end up here why why is he still doing this mm-hmm. right yeah i mean he well, says he's there because nobody's looking for him there right so that's, yeah you get the idea right. he's on the run. 
Well, he, he said he was a mercenary, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. and the line that the line that Moreau has it is kind of a dismissive thing, you know. You know what's going on now? You've been drinking for two days. You should just continue. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> well, I think just, I'd drink just... too if I was on that island. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> just saying. Or he'd be like, wonder how the wonder what the pig women are doing tonight. Yeah. Oh, you know what? He That's why I'd be drinking Tom, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and of he course, in, we have. He was in Peeping Tom in 1960. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's many years. Uh, uh, of course, we have the. Bear Man. The. Human animals. Yeah, the human think, animals. They really thought that was going to be a big thing because they really played that up in all the advertising yeah. and, and the articles. The human animals, TM. Like they were going to trademark that and make McDonald's toys or something with them. And yeah. Nobody. <laughs> You got Nobody wants man, to play a with man, a human a animal man. toy. Lion man, yeah. tiger man, bear man. Whatever it's Richard, well, what was Richard figures. Basehart supposed to be? I, you know. Movie. Beard man. I mean, I've, seen, man. I've sat next to people that look like him on a subway. There was, you know, it wasn't a great yeah. experience, but I didn't go running out of the subway. Oh my God, it's a human animal. Yeah, yeah Richard. What Basehart. if he was a ferret? A ferret? Oh. That would work. He was one of the more successful of the yeah. Changes. Mm. Missed um, it by that much. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he's he's playing basically the Bella Lugosi role, right? Yeah, right. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, Bella um, did it better. Well, how yeah. And they yeah, sort of I, based it, it looks with the hair and everything, except Bella Bella's I think was black black hair. Right. And he's got all white hair, but it's sort of I don't Are know. Are we not men? Yeah. Of course. And of course. Richard what show Bates is he? Art. Yeah, I was gonna say, what show was he best known for in the sixties? Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Ah. Uh, see, look you look at the guys in the middle. It looks like they just yeah, got yeah. caught doing something. Yeah. They were supposed to do. Yeah. It's it's like I think they didn't hire. I don't know who they hired, but they should have hired dancers or or people who had real good body control because. These guys just sort of like, I'm a, I'm a human animal. <laughs> Can't walk mm. up straight. Hunch your shoulders. <laughs> you know, it just, I mean, you know, they, they should have gotten some folks who put some more. What would a fox be like if he did? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a dancer, but it just looked like bad cosplay. I don't see where the $6 million went here. The makeup effects are fine. They would be finer if they were well lit at night. I mean, that top shot's pretty good. The top shot, that's that's a cool effect. He, he's kind of mm -hmm. I guess he's a bear. He's kind of werewolf. He's bear but, man, yeah. Yeah, bear man. Okay, that's good. I like that. It, but there's some drama there. It's in, it's lit and and but you see it in the broad light there's, of day. There's some you just think a little bit of shadow to give it a little Yeah. But out in the daylight, all I'm thinking is there's a stunt man sweating his balls off there. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, probably. Uh, of course, they change York into Michael York and <laughs> ah, middle and, shot. He, he grimaces. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Too many know, prunes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure this works for me. No. At this stage, no. He uh, was even like, at his uh, most, yeah, he's got some. He's got some bad sideburns, mutton chops. His teeth stick out a little bit. Again, I have I have been in close proximity to people who look way more like animals than Michael York does at his hairiest in this mm. movie. So, but even even though it looks kind of cheesy there, the 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 exchange between him and Moreau in this scene was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where, where he's trying to re where he's trying to remember everything, yeah. and he did remember everything, which enraged Moreau. Right, and Moreau wants him to be be the, the animal, but he's fighting so hard that I just you know it was a great scene. You're absolutely right. That's that's probably the best acting and the best stuff in the whole film, right there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I just wish he. Uh, I don't know if the voice acting was worth it. Uh, the way he was mm -hmm. playing him, but it, uh, right. but yeah, that his whole trying to trying to keep on to his humanity. Yeah, you know, really felt. He really felt that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever really got anything out of the out of Maria though. I, I never really felt like she was in danger. I never felt like she needed mm -hmm. to leave. The only reason mm -hmm. that she would want to leave is be with him. But why would she want to leave? Well, something? I hated all the red herrings they were putting yeah. in there. I, I can never yeah. leave. I can't leave. Why can't you leave? I, oh, I've been here my whole life. I could never leave. Mm -hmm. Making you think 
She's one of Moreau's experiments. Yeah. Gonna turn into a cat. But yeah. nah. Nah. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm telling yeah, you. Know, she's we pretty got, much a blank well, slate on that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, spoilers. Uh, the yeah. <laughs> best shot in the movie. Oh, uh, yeah. That, well, that is visually, really yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, That's where the money went. They built a set and they burned it down. <laughs> well, you you might be right. <laughs> you might be right. Oh man! And I, to, so I it's won't. a great shot. It's a great yeah. shot, but it made no sense whatsoever. No sense. No, no not sense. at all. time. It took them the hoist up there. They didn't run while that was happening, so it didn't save right. them any time at all. Yeah. The the the, and the look on his yeah, face the, when he was hanging there, just like the they're like, animals I mean, they're staring at figured him. it out pretty quick yeah. yeah listen i know the human animals are not terribly bred i wouldn't like do my stick. taxes or anything <laughs> but they're not that stupid that you know oh yes he's alive and he's very very angry with you and when he gets angry you know how he is he gets very still just <laughs> yeah. stares at you let you think and about what you did yeah. and you it takes see him all move over. The guy with the whip at the bottom was beating yeah, yeah. his natural ass. You know, it's, it's during this scene. It takes know, them 10 seconds to poke him with a stick and say, nah, he's dead. Yeah. Let's go let all the wild animals loose. Like I said, they're not smart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, See, you were there's the ending that. right there. Yeah. That's the dang ending I was looking for. Wow. I can't remember who drew this. Look like uh, Larry Hama. Larry Hama. Larry Hama. Larry Hama. Yeah, that's right. Hama. My man. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, see I, I took that ending scene to be that she was changing. But it I, I felt like it was it was way too subtle. Though, completely undersold it. Yeah. It was yeah. yeah. And so did, they, did they never did they never film it? Or no, I am almost I well know. no, they this um this shot here, right? The, in the, the corner picture within the picture. Yeah, in the corner. She you, if you if it was close, you could see she's got teeth, sharp teeth. And her eyes are a little more cat-like, a little more like the cat iris. So they shot it. And I, again, I just have to assume the it didn't test well. Ignore test audiences. These people didn't even know what movie they were going to <laughs> see. <laughs> oh, man. I This movie. Yeah. This movie. <laughs> Uh, the taglines. What about the taglines? The doctor is insane. That's the crazy yeah. Eddie tagline. Yeah. Uh, Capital in letters. In yeah. Yeah. Uh, a tropical paradise untouched by man where a bizarre civilization exists. Contradictions. Okay. Just a contradiction of terms. Yeah. I don't kind of kind of suggest they don't know how to sell it. With a civilization. I know they didn't know how to, they didn't know how to sell it, did they? They know I, the island of Doctor Moreau. The U is silent. I don't know. I, I read this. They they just should have said the H. G. Wells classic and, and just right. yeah, yeah. that or um, yeah, turning animals into men probably would have you know roused the picketers somewhere, but they probably would have sold more tickets that way. Maybe once upon a time. I mean, Island of Lost Souls was actually banned in England for like 30 years because they're really, they're big on anti-vivisection laws. And in fact, that's what inspired right, Rose right. to write it. And I guess just the, the horrific elements, the idea of carving an animal into a human. And, oh man, I mean, that movie, that movie, when they get a hold of Moreau, when they get a hold of Charles Lawton, they strap him to the table, start breaking glass, and you just see these animals with the and, and you hear mm -hmm. horrible screams, horrible yeah. man screams as they're mutilating him. You don't see anything because you don't need to. Man, that's a kick-ass ending. That's a mm -hmm. great ending. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you just got so there, there are some interesting sure animal stunts. <laughs> for lack of a better word in this you know like the the the, the, the bull guy the bull going through the wall the, the tiger oh, yeah. the tiger the fight tiger. the yeah. tiger fight yeah i mean i'll give the stuntman full props that looked like a real tiger yeah it's almost it's almost say, don't like the equivalent of fulci zombie and the zombie yeah, fighting yeah. the shark yeah, uh, and then one of them, one of them was holding on to like the lion. Yeah, they had just been underwater. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had him by the collar. I mean, you know, they can say, "Well, yeah. look, he's a trained tiger." Yeah, that's what Siegfried and Roy thought. I mean, it's a tiger. If he has a bad day, if he has a flashback to back when he was, yeah. you know, 
I mean, they were going out two story buildings with the tiger underneath an yeah. arm, you know, and I kept looking for the sign that says no animals were harmed in this movie, but I did, I couldn't find it. I don't that know. Yet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, I'm a big, uh, oh, I don't know if I'm a big, you know, I, I was a big uh, voice of the bottom of the sea fan. But when I got into noir films, I discovered that Richard Basehart was in a bunch of really good film noir in the late 40s and the early 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just check out his filmography and they're all pretty good. And he's he's very good in them. And then one comment about Barbara Carrera, the movie she made right before this, Embryo. It's embryo, yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's remember a, that, that for well, later. Dude, we got to do that, that sometime. For that's, a, that's a twisted little movie. Mm. Rock Hudson, yeah. So, well, we did. We skipped over the whole makeup department. So, who wants? We did. Bill Mulligan to mention well, who's on this. John Chambers. I mean, and John Chambers is is you know no slouch. We're talking about the guy who definitely did Planet of the Apes and might have done the Patterson Bigfoot video. There's a lot of controversy. <laughs> uh, and did and did Spock's ears. Yeah, a, a master of foam rubber, and that's what this is now. As makeup materials go, I've never I've done very very little work with foam rubber, for the simple reason that I'm not too crazy about it. It, it to me it just it doesn't really it moves more than say a, a, a latex mask because you got to glue it to your face, but it it doesn't. I, I prefer other mediums. And the other thing is to actually make it, you got to cook it in an oven, and the oven you cook it in can never be used for human food again. So you know that would really chap my wife's hide there. So. Mm. Um, I just, I just feel like it, it, look, it's, it's, you know, they, they were very proud of the makeup effects though, you know, because the old time one, 1933, one, there was like putty and wax and they had to build it up and every day it would be different. And here you could make the molds and design it and all, and that's all well, good and true, but that doesn't mean we need to see it almost in clinical study and bright daylight where the, it just doesn't look that good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Uh, well, of course, he, he also worked on Dirk Benedict. He did. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's a great makeup artist and everything. Mm -hmm. But, oh, he's, uh, a, you know, he's a really he interesting film character because right? he made oh, yeah. prosthetics for people in the service originally. And he was the guy that. Wasn't he the one in Argo? Yeah. He, yeah. He yeah. Disguises mm -hmm. for CIA and stuff like that. So just a really interesting character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Tom Berman is part of it, and Daniel C. Strepke. Strepke, Strepke, Strepke. I'm familiar with Berman for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Didn't uh, Berman work on Cat Cat People? Uh, that, that sounds familiar. Yeah. We should know this. <laughs> I'm, taking, I'm taking too long here because I'm I'm almost certain we did something with. Uh... Yes. Strip, strip, stripecki in the eighties, but I'm I'm digging it up. Yeah, oh. you you do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys talk. Uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> like Nominated for two Oscars. Well, there you go. Uh, what Tom Berman's for wow. Saving Private Ryan and Forrest Gump. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, you, okay, he did the he did the effects for Prophecy, Chad. Okay. Oh, there, there we go. Yes. Prophecy, The Beast Within. And that gets him in the uh, club right there. One Dark Knight. Right. Uh, Teen Wolf Two, <laughs> not one, but two. So, uh, um, but that that's where he actually did the special effects. So the makeup, he is just crazy. He did so much makeup. Um, oh yeah. But he did Food of the Gods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which um, is the Burt Gordon one yeah yeah yes. yeah um boy who cried werewolf uh he was uncredited for phantom of the paradise um uh he and he did some work on close encounters he did he uh did the makeup bars from the manitou uh invasion Ooh. of body snatchers oh there you go um, I mean, he was one. He was one of the go-to guys, no question. My my, my bloody Valentine, the hand, happy birthday, the to hand. Hey, people. Chad's favorite. Halloween three, the season of the witch. Halloween um, three, that's probably yeah. Mm -hmm. The Goonies, he created sloth. Um, oh wow! Oh, <laughs> Scrooged, Scrooge. 
<laughs> Scrooge is is um, awesome. Yeah, especially oh, yeah, uh, yeah. the effects in that. I love awesome. Scrooge. Uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Uh, frogs. I don't know what do you do in frogs. Um, and of course, he assisted in Planet of the Apes, so that's where you know, you know, he worked sure. the tables. So yeah, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So I mean, a great makeup team and good makeup. It's just a pig man looks like a guy wearing a pig man mask if you don't okay. light him and dirty him up and have some you know i've seen pigs pigs are not clean animals they're they're sort of known for that but these guys all look like they just spent that morning wiping their faces and putting on their sunday vests and everything they were just too clean they need to be dirty so where up. i saw dan Becky, i'm sure was on beneath the planet of the apes hmm. And then he was on, he did uh, work on Escape from Planet of the Apes and Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. So, <laughs> and the, the, the seven S's, he also was yeah. on that. Seven Planet S's. of the Apes TV series. Oh, he did the special effects of Deer Hunter. That, I mean, oh, wow. all, you know, there's only one real shot for Deer Hunter, and we all remember That's that. That's a good one, one yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll forgive him for Dr. Detroit. Um, <laughs> I still haven't given forgiven Dan Aykroyd for it. Oh no, he yeah. did the effects for Jaws of the Revenge. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Oh no, the Burbs, Turner and Hooch, Joe versus the Volcano. I mean, obviously, well respected in the Hollywood community. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. For I mean, he he did some makeup in Forrest Gump, so yeah. Mm -hmm. He he. Did, it seems like he followed. Tom Hanks around the nineties. So yeah. I think Tom Hanks did. So. Yeah. Road to Perdition, Saving Private Ryan, Castaway. Yep. <laughs> the Burbs, Tuner Hurts, Joe versus the Volcano. Yeah. <laughs> Bonfire. Well, you know, there. look. <laughs> if, you're, if, if you're an actor, if you're an actor and you find makeup people that make you look good, you want them on every production because that's, mm -hmm. that's what they're there. Yeah, that's what you want. You want to look good or bad or whatever it is you're supposed to do. But if they fall down on the job. It's it's not pretty, literally not pretty. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, we got some feedback today. We do. All right. We let's do. go ahead. And let's go ahead. And wrap oh, this. Geez, Holy man. shit! No monkeys. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> and, you all right, Bill? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My cat. My here's his butt. Uh, my cat decided <laughs> to butt in and cat butt in. Get all right. It. Let's uh, let's go ahead. Jumped on you <laughs> off the shelf or something. I don't know what he did. He's, All right. he's a good boy. I'm, I'm going to rewind uh, this. Jeff, uh, go ahead, go ahead <laughs> and uh, dive in, dive in here and music. let us know uh, what your recommendation is and what you like most. Oh, about. for this? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I think you got to watch it. It's part of the uh, trilogy of H.G. Wells stuff AIP put out in the 70s along with... Uh, Food of the Gods, God. which is already an episode mm -hmm. of the 70s. And what's the other one? Uh, Kingdom of the Spiders, is that? Yeah. I think or that's a Kingdom of Wells. the Empire of the Ants. Uh, Empire, Empire of the, the Ants. Ants. I'm sorry. Yeah. Empire of the Ants. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's worth watching, especially for the cast. And I think to see the, the makeup effects. I think the, the one thing that doesn't look good to me is the uh, the color blends aren't great sometimes in the but again, they're out there in broad daylight so much that yeah, uh, it's hard to, uh, it had to have been hard. It probably looked good in one angle, then the next angle it wouldn't look good. So, but I, I kind of like them. Um, so anyway, yeah, I think it's worth a watch. Worth a watch. Chad, sir. Um, this will, uh, yeah, like I said at the beginning, this has some blemishes to it and, and um, can be dull in parts, but um this is still a pretty competent adaptation of, of the story um, that I really, really, I still like this movie. I, you know, I, just watching it made me think back to, you know, how much I liked it as a kid, you know? So um, yeah, it, it's definitely one people should watch if they have, have not seen it. And um, I, so yeah, I, I recommend it. I recommend it. Bill Mulligan's our, yeah, it's it's a great book. It's it's they turned it into one of my favorite movies and two movies I'm not crazy about. It's definitely worth a watch. It's it's a good good little time waster, but it doesn't stick in the memory, you know. So 
nice try. It was, for an AIP movie, it's it's actually pretty good. It's probably it's one of the best, it. actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you compare yeah. it to the other two that we mentioned, right. it's mm -hmm. definitely better. So. Um, yeah, so for me, I kind of treat this one like they treated the first guy on the boat that died. Just uh, throw it over. <laughs> <me>. um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, nah, that's a joke. But I... It, I, I I enjoyed revisiting it, and even though I still don't necessarily like the movie, I did find a new appreciation for it. Um, the, you know, the, more appreciation for the special effects, which I think are really strong, yeah. even if they're not filmed well, um, they are crafted well, and uh, and um, Richard Basart really, I mm -hmm. even though he's still pales in comparison to Lugosi and that's such an iconic role now right yeah that um it still is one it's it really is a strong role in there and he brings a lot to it I thought um I just I I, I just I think Burt Lancaster needed to bring a little bit more maniacal yeah act, you know flavor to the character it was a little like too reserved a little too I yeah. don't know um so I mean, yeah, it's 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 a respectable misfire. <laughs> I'll put it that way, but it's worth the watch. I, I definitely think it's worth the watch, um, and it, it's playing on Tubi now, and it's it's free on Tubi. You just got to put up with a commercial every now and then, and it's worth it. Absolutely. All right, let's jump into some feedback, Jeff Moore. What do we have? Well, this was. Uh one you forwarded me i think it came in through feedback at gruesome magazine.com from scott uh decades of horror appreciation and comments i have recently within the last few months found your podcast decades of horror and have been listening constantly to them while at work to get me through some gruelingly mind-numbing projects <laughs> i know the glad to be of service uh i'm glad we're not the the grueling mind-numbing part yeah uh while I've not ventured into the 80s, I do love the classic era, especially in some of the 70s. So those are the ones I've been listening to. I've pretty much caught up with all the classic era and was happy to find several new films to give a look to. While I had seen several of the Japanese films you covered, the Mexican ones were new to me. Awesome. And so I've been happily going through those. Ship of Monsters was a good deal of fun. And while I wasn't able to find the El Santo film you covered, I did get to watch Santo and Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman, which mm. was just tremendous fun. So much so that I went on a kick of watching as many of the El Santo movies as I could find and even <laughs> a few of the other uh, luchador movies of the era. Yeah, those are great. Um, Might have to do I'm going to have to send them a link to the one we did because I think I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. I noticed that in Decades Before a 70s show about Jaws 2, you did mention Roy Scheider's early appearance in the rather dire The Curse of the Living Corpse, mm, 1964. Yes. While the film itself is of questionable quality, <clears throat> why, for example, do the killer's very light blue eyes change to dark brown when he is unmasked? <laughs> There is at least an interesting connection there. Scheider secured the part because he was suggested for the role by Candace Hillegas of Carnival of Souls fame, who was also in that movie. In this way, we can sort of say that Herc Harvey is in some ways responsible for the eventual success of films like The French Connection or Jaws. Mm, Since we nice. can trace a path from Carnival mm. of Souls through Curse of Living Corpse to those other blockbusters. Or maybe not. Who knows? That sounds <laughs> That's like good to me. Connection. <laughs> connect the dots yeah um i'm hoping to hear a lot more from the classic era maybe a discussion of 1958's other dracula film the return of dracula with francis mm, letter yes. which we've talked about uh at the interesting movie um which has recently been fascinating me or the truly strange but beautifully filmed i bury the living also from 1958 mm. um yeah that's with uh richard boone you yeah uh, and yeah. isn't that a uh, that's a Roger Corman, I think. I think that was Charles Band, early Charles Band. I may be oh. wrong. What from fifty yeah. eight? From fifty eight. But yeah. Wow. Now okay. now you now you make me doubt myself. No, no, no. We just <laughs> look we it just, up. What, look it up. We just cat. No, we're not catfish. What do we do? Uh, and maybe maybe in the seventies you could cover Santo and Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman, just so I can have an excuse to watch that lunacy again. <laughs> Somebody might have that on their upcoming list. I okay, just, just for 
Albert it was Albert Band. Band. Yeah. Charles Band's Albert Band. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, good pick. Yeah. It wasn't a Corman production, though, huh? No. Okay. I have a uh, small and no doubt badly written film blog that covers a lot of things you do. It's erratically published, and I don't think anyone has ever looked at it. Yeah, but I'm if you'd sure. like to, you can find it here, the Saturday Mad Theater blogspot .com. We will look this so up. I'll we try sure to remember will. to put that in the in the, the blog for this episode. I feel bad because I listen to all of your podcasts going back for years and I don't feel right in commenting on most of them because it's sort of like necromancy. I'd be resurrecting dead topics years after they pass, but I will try yeah. to comment more going into the future. Yeah. Mike Zatz does it, so it's, it's good. I know. We're all good. Right. <laughs> Thank you all for covering these films that I love. I have few people I could talk to about these movies, and so it's nice to listen in and feel like I'm not on my own in my love for these older films. Keep up yeah. the good work, Scott. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Scott. That's exactly why we do this, Scott. So I really appreciate it. Right. I mean, I do it. So I have people to talk to about these films. Yeah. We have such smart uh we do listeners. Uh episode 151, Exorcist 2. Speaking of Mikey Z, I saw this when it was released in 1977, opening day, and like the 1973 original, I laughed so hard I needed a heart massage. Hmm. My hmm. response to the 73 classic was more nervous laughter to get me through the horrific events on the scene. Conversely, this 1977 POS was just too much <laughs> to bear on a different level. It was so bad. I actually considered walking out, but being the cheap bastard I've always been, I sat through this garbage. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the frig happened here as the young Latina victim of Pazuzu queries. Por qué? Por qué? Um, thankfully, William Peter Blatty would come roaring back with Exorcist 3. Yes. Some future, some future possible 70s episodes, he suggests. Images, 1972. Very weird, Susanna York. The other, 1972. We know that one, right? Another evil twin depression era flick. Mm -hmm. The Andromeda Strain, 1970. A virus is inside us, or maybe that's too soon. <laughs> Curse of the Bigfoot, 1978. Must be seen to be unseen. Or Embryo, 1976. I told you it would, it would come back. The luscious Barbara Carrera as a Frankenstein-esque creation of creator Rock Hudson. Rock Hudson. So, okay. I think we do there's all some, of them. There's some, <laughs> there's some ideas, folks. Uh, let's see. Uh, a couple more here. Episode 162, Demon Seed from Lone Wolf, who's a frequent listener and commenter. Lone Wolf says, Proteus was Alexa before Alexa was ever a thing. Did I read this True. before? I don't think I did. I don't think so. Um, I watched this movie this months ago, and it still disturbs me how the computer AI forces Julie Christie into having his, quote, demon, demon scene. <laughs> it's a decent movie with a concept that had untapped potential, great performance by Julie Christie, a few unintentionally funny moments, Threatening Julie by making the force super hot made me snicker. <laughs> and that doozy of an ending. I'll probably give this a 7 out of 10. Much love to the group crew, Lone Wolf. Thank you. Thanks, Lone Wolf. Thank you. Thank you. Good comment there. Alexa before Alexa. Yeah, I'm it sure that. was. Uh, 164 Invasion of the B-Girls. Mikey Z again. William Smith, Anitra Ford, and other lovelies sexing up what Bill referred to as paunchy white dudes causing, <laughs> a, <laughs> causing a stir in a small populated community. Did not see this until it was announced as an upcoming episode, but had heard about it for years, perhaps decades. Being a big fan of the Kolchak TV series, yeah. William Smith appeared in one of those episodes, The yeah. Energy Eater. And outside of Darren McGavin, he was the best thing in the story. Anitra Ford sizzles, especially when she is only wearing a lab coat. <laughs> 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 being abruptly interviewed by the William Smith character whose last name was Agar a call back to another B film star I wondered about that Maybe we've, not. Had a, we've had a couple starring John Agar and on classic era and love the various stories of the panel of their past <laughs> adventures with flying stingers again a honey of a podcast by the crew crew what's next <laughs> uh, 
after that other than the epic the swarm Swarm. hey i tried i tried that one time and i got voted down like thor's hammer i just got smashed down on that one good i hope you learned your lesson i did not apparently it will come back around it'll come back around uh this one from evil genius on invasion of the b girls a few takes on this discussion not necessarily the movie (laughs) ha as a kid growing up in the 80s the day after scared the heck out of me yeah, yeah, that was the the uh, nuclear war one. Right? That was that was a vent. I mean, we talked about that in school. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Jeff, I did catch your reference to the stuff. Okay, I... did you forget it? Glad forgot somebody it. did. Star Trek, <laughs> Star Trek: The Motion Picture suffered heavily from the owners of the TV rights, CBS, and the owners of the movie rights, TV rights, CBS, and the owners of the movie rights, Paramount, fighting over who would bring Star Trek back. It was much work on a TV series, Star Trek Phase 2, but who would ultimately get the glory of Gene Roddenberry's blessing was up in the air. The movie went out, and we got Star Trek, the motion picture. And that movie is like Halloween 3. At first, everyone hated it, but over time, it won people over. It was bland in color, but ultimately, I love the story. But yes, The Wrath of Khan is the best Star Trek movie, period. Many of those Phase Two scripts were eventually used when Star Trek: The Next Generation was dealing with the writers' strike. Oh, interesting! Not particularly surprising. Oh man, the writers' strike! Wow. I'm I actually, I actually personally believe that Galaxy Quest is the best Star Trek movie. Yeah. Bugger. Yeah. <laughs> I shall leave you with what could have been William Castle's "The Bees" in Three BO. Three B. <laughs> and finally, Jerry. I mean, Terror. Episode one sixty five, Terror of Mecha Godzilla, it just came out today, and Jerry Chandler already wrote us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and 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 is you know goes through and fact fact checks us. Uh, you hit oh, a lot of points God. that are basically <laughs> what I would say. So not much to add on this one. I do wish this one didn't crash as bad as it did with Japanese audiences. Why I, While I dearly love the goofier stuff from the era, I found myself enjoying the few films of the era that played with darker themes more and more over the years. It would have been interesting to see what would have followed if they were able to make a run of films leaning more into the earlier than they ultimately did. Leaning more into that earlier than they ultimately did. Uh, I think your final overall ranking would have been higher if this film featured more. Jack <laughs> <laughs> You're damn right about that. <laughs> Jack and I will see you having God Monster Vinian Flats on Blu ray with my copy on Blu ray and raise you my owning Octoman on Blu ray. Octoman! Yeah. And yes, Miss is <laughs> mentioned in Lovecraft's work. Santos actually points that out in the episode where you all covered it. Hmm. I still can't watch that film these days without almost immediately thinking about him talking about it the way he did. I'm the same yep. way. Yep. Absolutely. The man. Uh, thanks, guys. Even though yes. we mentioned it today, thanks so much, everybody. Thank Mikey you, Z, thank you. Uh, Jerry, our uh, resident fact checker, and uh, Jerry Chandler, Evil. member Evil. of the Jet Jaguar Evil. fan club, Mikey Z, Lone Wolf, and. Scott, thanks so much for uh, commenting. Oh, and, I just want to say uh, one thing. I, I I let that slip by me when Mikey Z recommending the Curse of Bigfoot. Um, you guys thought God Monster of Indian Flats was as bad as something can be. You've never seen the Curse of Bigfoot or Teenagers versus the Thing, which is the the, the history of this film is so complicated and the results are so cosmically dreadful. That you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Um, is that is that bad? Is that is that bad? Uh, <laughs> you gotta watch it. Uh, you gotta watch it. All right. Well, we uh, let's go ahead and announce what we have for our next episode. Uh, since it's my pick, Jeff, do you want me to go ahead and say it? Do it. Do it. All right. This uh, okay. I picked an obscure one. Yeah. I'm not sure you guys have heard of this one, but it's called A nope. Reflection of Fear. I've never heard of it. And from 1973. And yeah, I even have to keep looking it up to remind myself what this is. 
because I was like, what is this movie? Is it really a horror film? And uh, yeah, it is. And apparently it's supposed to be pretty tense. Uh, but I guess uh, we'll in, find out. In it's a bold spirit, statement these days. Yep, in yeah. the spirit of the 47th anniversary of Jaws, it's got Robert Shaw as okay. the lead. And yes. it also has, oh, Sally, I'm in, then. I'm has in. Sally Kellerman, That's which Sally you, can Kellerman. Always, you can always use Sally Kellerman. And sure. I believe it has... Um, the early, an early, if not first, um, role for Sandra Locke. Oh, yes, yeah, she's in this. So, yeah, I don't know if no. it's how early it is, but yeah, before she met hmm. Clint Eastwood, before she met Clint Eastwood, became yeah. an Urza. Sandra hey, Locke I'm always up for <laughs> something new. Um, where, so is, I, where is this one found, Doc? Uh, it, it's found on our, our new friend, Tubi. Okay. Yeah. 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 Tubi has been a friend. Yeah. But I, I, this is, this is going to be a new one for me, guys. This one Mm. is pulled out of the depths of obscurity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, be interesting. And I was like, is this a TV movie? And I said, but it was rated PG. So it's not a TV movie. Actually, it's theatrical. And I did some digging and there is some, some uh, interesting, uh, stuff about, we'll get to that in the next episode, like, uh, how, how it was released and, with what it was released, so we'll we'll do all that later. But um, I'm excited to see this and to see cool. if some of the uh, uh, research I read into it lives up. So I hope you guys like it. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Then. Sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, And then we'll follow that up with something a little bit more well known. I hope I don't know who's next, but there's your challenge. Well, I'm next, <laughs> and I already told you what I'm doing. So oh, look at that! There's a kitty. It's going uh, like... <laughs> Chupacabra. Oh, no. All right. That's not the title of the movie, by the way. Uh, no. Hey, look, a kitty. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. That's our review of The Island of Dr. Moreau. Uh, we hope you uh, take the opportunity to check it out and let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. We love hearing the comments. Thank you for all the previous ones. And uh, we hope you return next week for The Reflection of Fear. Jeff, Chad, Bill, Doc. That's me. Thank you all for joining. <laughs> you like Thank that? You. I mentioned mentioned I thanked, myself. I thanked, I thanked myself for being always here. always go for the chance to mention yourself. No matter what <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> every I every door I walk through, I, oh. I'm like, it's me, Chad. <laughs> Hello, Chad. <laughs> every door, every door you walk through. Oh my god! I go in the bathroom. It's me, yeah, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> and the mirror says, "Hey, Chad." Oh, and the toilet's Chad. like, "Oh no!" Yeah, no thank no. you for watching, Chad. Close the door. Close the door. All right, guys. Uh, let's say good night. Good night, Bye, everybody. Adios. <laughs>